Hi everyone, and welcome back. James from Lee. If you like this channel, please like and subscribe to this channel. It massively helps as always. So we are in Lincolnshire today, just finishing off this heat pump. Uh, this is a really interesting project. The customer many years ago has built this house himself, very well insulated, new build standards, fantastic. His current, his old heating system, sorry, is underfloor heating throughout, and he's got a thermal store. That thermal store was electrically heated by immersions in economy seven overnight. And then a wood burner um, and yeah, in hot water via that as well, which we'll show you inside. We have put this Aerotherm Plus uh, in its place, taken out uh, what's needed inside, but we've kept the thermal store and we've adapted. So it's really interesting how we can adapt to existing stuff, putting new efficient green energy technology on, making the customer Run costs really good and carbon footprint fantastic. So let's go inside and show you how we set it up. Okay, okay. So we are in the cylinder cupboard or thermal store. So let me take you through what he was doing before and what we're doing now, the overall premise of the uh, installation. And what we're really interested in is if we can get some comments below how you might have done it differently and your thoughts. So, uh, Everything's no panacea, as I say, Adam Chapman. Uh, so let's see how we go on. So what happened was, economy seven, immersion, and there was another immersion as well, lots of immersions. Economy seven, and he's got an eddy as well down here. So he's got lots of solar PV outside, which you can see by the videos. Uh, lots of solar PV via the eddy and via economy seven loads a night. Lots of cheap energy. He wants to utilize that. So that uh, was heating this thermal store and how it got to the underfloor heating was pump on the manifold downstairs actually pulled it from the thermal store and what quite interesting there's like three ports and there's a mixing valve on this so it decided which port it would take it from if one was hotter than the other it was really good um so we've got away from that there was the three ports we've got away from that one in the middle uh, now we've got a flow and return on that and I'll explain that. How we got his hot water was basically immersion, heated up, cold going in, hot going out. Uh, I can also tell you some benefits of a thermal store, which is really interesting. Well, okay. We have taken away the electrical part of this installation. It's on the floor downstairs, on the floor upstairs and a nice little wood burner in the front. Still got that. We've adapted that flow and return now to our uh, heat pump and that is via the three port doing the hot water so when the three port goes over to do hot water it heats this big body of water inside nice and hot yes this is overkill it is 500 liters it's massively overkill i understand that but we utilize an existing stuff lots of uh, savings on that uh, cost wise and carbon footprint wise as well not having to produce a cylinder put it in its place stuff like that so yes probably a little oversized and a little over the top of the project but hey it's here let's utilize it so hot heated the thermal store our cold goes in via the biggest coil in the world i think it's over six square meters uh, and then comes out hot we've it didn't have before probably didn't need it but because we're over engineering anyways we've put a little if you can see that there we go a little expansion vessel on the cold to hot side as well, because obviously that hot can expand, the coil can expand. We just don't want a PIV going off. So we put a little expansion vessel uh, there, tiny. It's literally for that pipe work, not the body around it. So that's done now. So yes, uh, we've utilized that pipe work, which used to go down to the uh, the manifold, the, the, uh, the underfloor. And now we are utilizing back up for the three port for the hot water production. Um, yeah, so it's working fine. So heat pump does uh, heating only by the three pot. The heat pump does the heating and goes over by, by, by the three pot, which we'll show you downstairs. And now we're getting our hot water production via the thermal store via the heat pump as well. Um, also, we've made this a pressurized uh, system as well. It was unvented before. Um, no, it's unvented now. It's unvented now. So we're going to make this um, and we put a vessel in the loft space uh, to cope with the amount of water in the system. The only problem that I've had with commissioning is that 
This is 500 litres worth of heating system water, which I have to treat. It doesn't help with the defrost. It doesn't help with the elongating cycle times. It kind of just stands there. Yes, it will go back through the system eventually, up in the three port and stuff like that. But that isn't a body of water that we can kind of utilize. We have got a volumizer downstairs, which I will show you as well. So that was the only downside of this system is that we've had to treat more water than we needed to, but they are never ever gonna run out of hot water. And the benefit as well also is that they can do this store temperature very quite low because of the mass amount of water that's not gonna run out and drop down in temperature. And yeah, the coil size as well. So they can really get that store temperature low. Plus another benefit is that it doesn't need a Legionella cycle as well because there's not a standing body of water for your hot water cylinder as normal. So we don't need a Legionella cycle on there and we're saving energy that way as well. Perfect. So I'm gonna show you downstairs and show you our setup of how we've got it to the thermal store by the heat pump. Okay. Okay, I'm gonna take you through this now. So primary pipe where it comes down here, uh, we've got our flow, so our three port, that's gonna go up to the thermal store, utilizing them, that original pipe work that used to come downwards from the thermal store and was electrically heated via the immersions via common EV7, but we have utilized them, fantastic. We wouldn't have been able to set the flooring up, no way, finish house, beautiful. So we've utilized them, then going down, and going to our underfloor as well. Uh, we have just put another little radiator in the hallway as well for aesthetics and coats and stuff like that as well. So then a little pipe work down below is for that. We are currently, i point the camera, as always, doing our water quality um, setup, our VDI. So get that back right. Um, so it's currently doing that, getting the micro Siemens under 100 and making sure the water quality is absolutely perfect. Uh, commissioning this up, doing the documents and everything like that and handing over to the customer with a fantastic explanation. Next of all, I'm going to show you the valent controls and the valent setup of how we think this should be uh, controlled. There is a little bit of a trade-off between what we want and what the customer wants, uh, efficiency-wise, comfort, return on investment. So it's just that balance. And I think in this particular uh, project, it will be uh, how we're getting on, test it and adjust and adapt basically. So yeah, really interesting. Just a little bit of lagging to finish off here. Also, we've got a 50 litre volumizer on the return. I have calculated the kind of usable water, comments below again on this, the usable water in the system. Heat pumps love water anyways. Um, I think it's a second law of thermal dynamics. Heat and can't be created or destroyed. Anyways, uh, but 50 litre volumizer on the return, which will elongate the, uh, the cycle times and help with defrost as well. We love a volumizer, depending on the size of the system, the amount of water we've got in the underfloss uh, heating circuit, we'll size the water overall and we might put a, we'll put a volumizer on there. This one's got a 50 litre volumizer on there. So we are doing the uh, checks and yeah, it's a bit, pretty much a basic setup. Um, so fantastic, yeah. Okay, okay. Um, we're gonna go over the controls. Um, comments below will be really interesting in how we should set this up, or how we've set this up. Uh, maybe a little alteration to get the best out of the system. The customer wants to run the hot water and the heating during the night on the Economy 7, so like really ramp everything up. The screed and the thermal mass is absolutely massive on this house. So he's hoping to do all of his usage during the night. Whether that'll work or not, we'll see. So we can't do it on pure weather compensation. Let's have a look at the settings. 
Can't do it on pure weather compensation, which we normally do. Settings, install level zero, installation configuration. Basic system is eight. Um, we have got circuit one. Off temperature outside, that's more to do with weather compensation, but we'll still put that on. Heat curve is a little bit high. I would have done it lower, but because he wants to do a lot during the night, I've just put that, that a little bit higher, maximizing cheaper energy during the night. We might have to go back onto pure weather compensation if this doesn't work, but this is how I want to go on it. So the customer wants to run his heating and hot water during the night, preload basically that thermal store and the thermal mass of the underfloor. Okay, so it is active, um, minimum and maximum flow temperatures, and our curve is 60. So we'll see how we're going with that, and we'll obviously put it on a schedule and time. So some nice product flames, flames, flames. Well, Ricky there. Um, and domestic hot water, uh, same again. We're going to put it on a schedule. Um, I think that 90 minutes of cycling time is absolutely fine. A hysteresis, not really within them, them scheduling, it's going to take notice of that, but it's just going to go for it during the night. Um, and yeah, just a little note as well on the main controller of the valent controller, we've put the hot domestic hot water on balanced as well, not on eco, it takes far too long. It wants to utilize that cheap tire, so let's get up and do it. Not fully go for it, but a bit of a balanced pump. Um, so that'll save a bit of energy as well. So that's the setup of this um, system. Hopefully that's interesting. And then yeah, if you want to give us some comments below on if you would set up a little differently, it all helps. Well, there you have it. Thanks for watching again, guys. And as I say, if you like this channel, please like and subscribe to this channel. Uh, it massively helps as always. And comments below will be really interested in the, on this one of how you would set this heat pump system up and how you would have maybe designed it a little differently to us. We think it's fantastic as always at Elite. And yeah, um, this customer is gonna massively benefit from uh, lots of things on this system, utilizing their current thermal store, low temperature uh, heating system now, reliable and constant hot water, carbon footprint and low running costs. So really good benefits to this system. And yeah, looking forward to the winter ahead and seeing how this project and this property gets, um, gets going. So yeah, thanks for watching again. I hopefully enjoyed it and see you on the next one.